But there were so many different groups, uh, the NAACP, the SCLC. Um, one of the things that you have studied and paid attention to is gender in the civil rights movement, as well as the different um, approaches that different groups took. So maybe you can give us a little background on that. Well, sure. Everyone should know, of course, that for all of the male leadership that came out of the church in particular, and that is very much embodied in the tradition of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference and its many branches, which wasn't just about uh, Martin Luther King, uh, African American women were really the infrastructure of those organizations. Uh, they were the ones that made sure that people showed up at the meetings. They were the ones that made sure that people made the donations to help to bail people out. They were the ones that held male leaders accountable when they strayed and didn't, didn't stay focused. Um, and even when you, and I didn't mean to be cheeky there. <laughs> there, there there are wonderful, rich examples of, of wives telling their husbands that if you don't go to that meeting, if you don't represent this community, don't come back home expecting anything that you, <laughs> that you think you might deserve. And, and they, knew, they knew exactly. Um, It'll the, be a long, cold night is what you're saying? That's right, the effect of that. <laughs> But more particularly, I want to hi highlight the contributions of one of those sheroes uh, whose work certainly transcended even assisting SCLC, and that is Ella Baker. Uh, Ella Baker was, mm -hmm. uh, Ella Baker was an early uh, NAACP field secretary, and by early I mean right after World War II, when the when the movement as we know it was really a fractured effort, north south urban, rural, uh, really people taking control of their communities trying to make a difference. And her job was to organize to help to, to put those branches on the map so that they would be effective. Uh, she left the NAACP in 46. Uh, she lived in New York City. Uh, and she helped SCLC really develop its infrastructure, helped it get it off the ground, which again is often not part of the official narrative. But she ran into uh, the, the, the paternalism, um, the male dominance, the, the unwillingness uh, for men to accept the challenge of a woman's voice in saying you're making the wrong decision. And she also uh, objected to top-down leadership. Uh, eventually, she left the NAA, uh, she, left, she left SCLC, and she um, joined the sit-in movement, which, which was this organic, somewhat spontaneous, but not entirely spontaneous effort by college students who said enough is enough, and she decided to take all of that history of organizational leadership and give it over to them uh, to, to help them, the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee uh, that would go on and pick up the battle of the sit-in movement. And we have one of his scholars here to talk about it, so we can say more. But Ella Baker was really fabulous um, in her commitment, in her passion, in her effectiveness at bridging those gaps between the NAACP, the SCLC, and SNCC, and giving grassroots leadership the push and the effort that it needed uh, that SNCC could provide. Yeah, and there's a, there's a great center named for her that's out in the East Bay of California. Yeah, Britta. Yeah, I just wanted to add to this to even stress it more. It's that Ella Baker was really the one who was sort of the, the mother of SCLC because after the Montgomery bus boycott, King and most of the others sort of didn't want to go anywhere. And she was the one pushing, saying, we need to use the psychological momentum of Montgomery to build a strong Southern organization, to have sort of a counterweight to the Northern-based NAACP here in the South. And she was the one getting started. She was the the first executive secretary building up the office in Atlanta and everything. And uh, she was also the one who always said, to stress what you were saying, and she would have taken issue with what you guys were saying earlier about the <laughs> followers and strong leaders and effective followers. She always said, strong people do not need strong leaders. And this mm -hmm. is what, what her was, strong people don't need strong leaders. What she wanted to was in the South to develop leadership out of a group. She was for group-centered leadership and she wanted to change those hierarchical structures, which is why she often came head to head with King in the SCLC and he had a problem with dealing with strong women. And uh, that's why she went to uh, be with SNCC because she thought that the student movement would possibly be a venue to, uh, to really um, realize this option of group-centered leadership and to be truly democratic and have gender equality. And SNCC was, of all the civil rights group, the one that was most integrated in terms of gender equality. Just wanted to add that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 